Today's video is brought to you by my amazing patrons on Patreon. Priority deck requests and extended discussions are just some of the many perks you get for being a patron. Consider supporting the channel today. Welcome back to today's build. I'll be your guide to this wonderful game we all love. Let's get started. Today's deck leaves only tears behind. Her name is Archangel Avison, and this is the Emo Phase. When Avison enters the battlefield, your creatures get indestructible. This is doing the most when we're playing a lot of creatures and putting them in harm's way. There are a lot of complex interactions with this card, so for the sake of time, I'll just walk you through some conclusions. With a board full of creatures that have three sacrifice effects, we flash in Avacyn on the end step before ours and sacrifice one of our creatures. Avacyn sees the sacrifice, but wait until our upkeep after we've untapped to wipe the board, which means we have mana available to either protect our board, or my favorite, flicker Avacyn so that she protects our board. We can keep reusing that transformation trigger to control the board and prune enemy life totals while we do. This means that the creatures we most want are ones that sacrifice themselves for free to generate utility, or have ETB abilities that we could also potentially flicker. In this instance, we also like creatures with death triggers and creatures that have a high enough toughness to survive for transform, creatures that like getting hit and ways to find them. City on Fire, Solfem, and Gisela Blade of Gold Knight all increase our damage output, but not by enough to win us the game. Even though we'll reliably be able to fire off the Avacyn sequence a couple of times, that sequence is very resource intensive, and none of its pieces do anything that might be considered card draw. If we make the game go long the way that these cards want you to so that they see more damage, we'll run out of steam and lose very quickly. Add to that fact that they're not the cheapest cards by mana or money, and we have to make these swap. Nahiri's Resolve, Karmic Guide, and Sun Titan all represent ways to reissue our Enter the Battlefield effects, but never at a time when we actually need it. And just like the earlier damage amplifiers get better when we draw out the game length, which isn't what we want, so we'll focus on flickering Avacyn with these instead. So what do our lands look like? Two color decks can get away with a lot of basic lands and a small number of duels. But in fact, most of our key pieces are white, and we don't really need to dip into red very much at all until we're going for the win. So our land base is even less demanding than usual here. We're still running these lands for fixing, and which is clinic to give Avacyn lifelink, but apart from that, it's very basic. So what's our timeline? Turn 1 will run out Barrens and Forage Tender, Insolent Neonate, and Benevolent Bodyguard. Turn 2 will deploy Bounty Agent, Reckless Barbarian, and Remorseful Cleric to set up some interaction that might deter our faster opponents. Turns 3 and 4 we can play Mage's Attendant, Metropolis Reformer, and Gilrean to protect our game plan, and drop any of these tutors to line up cards for our endgame. Turn 5 will flash in Avacyn on an enemy turn, preferably the turn before ours, sacrificing one of our Rattlesnakes, and transforming on our next upkeep or we'll flicker her to protect the rest of our board. Then, if we still don't have our win together, we'll dig through the deck with Light Up the Stage, Inspired Tinkering, and Ignite the Future, finally cultivating a combo win with any of these Punisher cards, in conjunction with Guilty Conscience. Then, we pop another creature and flicker Avacyn for Indestructible to cross the finish line. This deck actually has won games on turn 6, if unreliably. Its greatest strength is how hard it is to interact with and how consistently it finds its win conditions. Its greatest weakness, though, is the long game. If your opponents can slow you down long enough and draw out the game length, you will run out of resources, so do not fight the War of Attrition. A very special thanks to all my amazing patrons. When I started this channel, I wanted to talk about deck building decisions with my videos, but in practice what ends up happening is that I talk for 30 minutes about all the nuance of a deck, which is longer than I'm comfortable with posting to YouTube. 
Here, patients can request priority deck techs, access extended discussions on their favorite decks, in-depth guides on complex game actions, and more. So if you enjoy this content, consider becoming a patron today. One of the things my patrons have made possible is a special series of deck techs that I'm really excited to show off to you guys. When I finally get them all uploaded, I'll be giving away a special collection of altars and tokens that I've made, corresponding to each deck on the channel. For example, for the Merkle Lord of Bones deck, the prize is a set of double-faced altars of the most prominent cards in the deck, whose backsides are set in the constellation frame with updated text to show that they're acting as enchantments now. For every thousand views on each video, I'll increase the prize pool for that deck. All you have to do to be eligible to win is be subscribed to the channel. Consider supporting the channel today. If you like this video, here are some of the decks I'm working on next, so if you like what you see, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any, and check out the playlist in the top left for more. Thanks for watching!